Okay, so I guess we are live. Hola. Hello, everybody. Let's wait one minute to make sure that we are in the right time. Great. Okay, let's make sure that the camera works. Everything is working. Familiarities. Hello. Hi, Leslie. Hey. <laughs> Always the first one. Always the first one. Yes. How are you? Good morning from Louisiana. Hello, everybody. Hola, hola. So we are almost at five o'clock. Hi, Susie. Good morning. Oh, it doesn't sound perfect. Thank you so much. Hey, no puedo poner gafas. Hola, William. Oh, yes, you can. Hi. Hola from Colorado. Hi, Janet. Good morning for everybody. Hola, abuela. Yes. No tengo mascarilla. We're not wearing a mask today. Yes. No mask. Good morning from California. Wow, Colorado, California. I really enjoy that. Me too. <laughs> I wish I could wear it. It's raining anyway. Hi, Ivy. Raposki. 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 Difficult. Difficult. It's five o'clock? It is like five o'clock. Okay, hi. Time to wake us up. Wake up, everybody. Good morning. <laughs> so, Good morning. hello, everybody. My name is Francisco. And I am Elo. And today, we have the amazing honor to be visiting Pam Navarra's Museum of Historical Art. Okay. Uh, it's incredible that they're opening this place just for us. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. it's, well, uh, they're working, okay, because they're under construction, taking care of some things. So we might be listening, hearing some weird no noises, but the whole museum is for us. And they have left us. I mean, this, I thought they were going to be following Whoa. us, like, okay, like cops. Right? <laughs> so big responsibility. Hopefully we'll get all the information correct and everything. First things first, let us thank the Museum of Navarra. Okay, there we go. Yeah, hold it. There. there we go. That is the Museum of Navarra. Um, thanks to the government of Navarra for allowing us to be filming today in here. So, yes. thank you, everybody. So, as we said, this museum is a history art museum, which means that at this moment it is placed chronologically. Okay, at the bottom we start with prehistoric uh, art. Okay, and as we go higher and higher in the building, we go. Uh, getting more modern, okay? So today, instead of standing in the prehistorical pre part of the museum, we have come to the Roman part, and we're gonna start here, okay? Uh, as I we said, uh, they are taking some constructions uh, in the museum, so it's not perfectly chronologically placed, okay? Because of the constructions. So, let's start in Roman times. Uh, here we have some amazing, amazing mosaics, okay? They come from different villages from all around Navarre. All the art we're going to see here today, it comes from the estate of Navarre, the region of Navarre. This particular uh, mosaic, I think it's so beautiful because look at the size of each one of the little stones. Okay, this is a finger. Hi, Pam. Hi, lady. So, each one of the stones is super tiny little thing. And look how big and beautiful it is. It. Yes, <laughs> you need to be so patient. Patience, patience. Yeah. Yes. And one thing that we have, we love, is in this little room, we have these huge stones. These stones are called miliarios, miliaries. And they were set uh, they were placed by the Roman roads, okay? You have to think that all the Roman Empire had amazing roads that we still use, okay? Uh, for example, the road that takes you from Madrid all the way to Pamplona, it is a national one, and it is the Roman road, okay? They did an amazing job. And they would set all of these stones to mark the direction, kilometers, who paid for it, who was the emperor, and the whole thing. We call them millarios, that comes and the word miliario uh, gives us the word mile because the Romans, uh, they measure the roads by miles, okay? Uh, one mile 
it is the equivalent, sorry for that word, <laughs> to 1,000 steps. And hold it. Elo is going to do a demonstration. Let me show you to you. A step for the Romans was that, two feet. So 1,000 of those will make one mile. And these stones are called mileariums, miliarios, okay? And they would mark all the roads by miles, which I think it's superb, okay? We have many of these all around here uh, in this museum. Look at that other mosaic, which is so, so beautiful. Okay, so from here, from Roman time, we are going to start walking. Yes, See? Yeah. Uh, once again, we're gonna be skipping many, many things. Well, I love this <laughs> sculpture that <laughs> you don't see anything? As Angelo says, we only have the feet of the guy who measures the miles. Yes. <laughs> Probably. Why yeah. not? Maybe yes, maybe not. But okay. only we have one and a half. So, uh, after the Roman Empire falls down, Christianity comes, and the first art, Christ, mm, sorry, art form in Christianity, it is Romanesque or Romanic art. This is proto-Romanic, which is the, the first stages, no? Yes. And uh, this is 11th century, uh, the end of 10th century, beginning of 11th century. But in this museum, we have what we're gonna see next, which are the capitals of uh, the old cathedral of Pamplona, okay? All of these capitals, uh, tells us stories of the Bible, and it's the, the work in them, it's really, really, really amazing. There is one which is extremely beautiful. It's the next one, not this one. It's incredible the difference between the first one that we have in the other place and that one, the difference. Yeah, I mean, the artwork, yes. there's less than 1,000 years. Yes, and it's incredible. No, sorry, 100 years. And the work here, it's incredible. So we're going to take a little bit of time in this special capital, okay? This capital was in the cloister of the Cathedral of Pamplona. It was on top of the pillars of the cloister. And it's going to tell us the life of Job, J-O-B, okay? He's in the Old Testament, in the book of Job. Yes. Okay? And Job, uh, this book tells us that Job, he loves Jesus Christ and he's very well with Jesus Christ and evil he he says okay you know Hob gets to talk with God and then he say you know Hob is likes you because you give him a lot of good things he has seven boys he has uh, three, girls. three daughters three girls yes, yes. <laughs> and he's just nice to you because Everything of that goes. and then God says you know okay what I'm gonna do is you can do whatever all the bad things you want to Hob, except, except killing yes, him, yes. okay? You can do whatever, and that way, if he still believes in me, I will, uh, I will prove to you, evil, that he l believes in God, okay? So this capital tells us this story. So here, on the higher part, we have God talking with the devil, okay? And they're talking about Hob, which is down here, with okay. This is Hob. Yeah. Okay. This is Hob. His, his wife, wife. His three daughters, and the seven boys in here. It's incredible because they are tiny, and you see everything there. Look all the it's little really details. Incredible. I mean, look. One of the things I love. Look at the hair in the beard of Jesus, of God. I mean, the hair coming down is so extremely beautiful. And remember, this is a stone, okay? For you to get a sense of the size, this is my hand, so it's super small. So imagine working there. Okay, so then the devil starts working and starts doing a lot of bad things. Uh, okay, this past Sunday was from the Book of God, of Hope. Okay, I didn't know that one, Leslie, thank you. Uh, so the first thing that happens here, we have Hope. That one, he's praying, okay, thanking God for all the blessings he has. And suddenly, these two servants come and tells Hope that uh, people has come and 
are killing their animals, their camels, and everything. And here we have Hob. You see his, he has some scissors, right? Okay, where's the finger? Over here. Those are the scissors, right? So he's cutting his hair in front of his wife, okay, and the daughters. And underneath we have the people killing the animals down there and stealing the camels. And so it's incredibly, I mean, look at the hair of the animals. I mean, it's so beautiful. Then evil keeps on going and uh, he, Hob is having a celebration with his uh, male, his boys, okay? They are in a tent and uh, evil brings this huge wind and kills the seven, uh, the seven sons. So how on earth do you portray wind? Okay, you point L. Okay, do you see that little thing? Do you remember when you are going to light a fire? Those, I don't know how you call the uh, things. <laughs> well, those things, <laughs> okay. So there Sorry. you have all the kids dying, falling from the tent, okay, which is incredible. Then he keeps on going and he gives evil, gives this is hope. We have him here with all of these chicken pox, uh, spot, yeah? spots, pox, pox, sorry. And he's suffering big time and God talks to him and he starts recovering. So if you see the pox in his face on the second image are much better than the rest of his body because God is coming to him through his body. So it's an amazing, amazing work of art. I just love all of these details. Look at the angel wings. It's so, 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 so gorgeous. I'm totally in love. Uh, it's really incredible that someone can make that only with the storm and yeah. the hands. It is really incredible. incredible. So, and this dates the 11, 12th and the 12th century. Yeah, 1100s. Yes. So it's really an amazing thing. So the thing is that we have here uh, divided these three capitals that we see here. They tell us the stories of the Bible. And all of these other capitals, they represent nature. Okay? So we have flowers, we have many, many, many representations of nature. Right? So, but everything is so extremely beautiful. I mean, I think it's breathtaking. Hola, Brenda. Hola, Tefi. I mean, isn't it amazing? Look at those. I mean, it's like, que preciosidad. I'm deeply in love. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, shall we go up? Yeah. Okay. So, this is the Romanesque part of the Museum of Navarre. Okay. We are. Now we're going to have to go up the stairs. Yeah. So, yeah. Ellie's pointing out. Can you see that? Because today, when we see these stones, we see them in stone color. But back then, they were colored. So, if you see all the green, the gown of this guy. It's totally green. I don't know if you can perceive it, if you can get it through the camera, okay? But it's, we get to see some colors, some leftover colors. Yes. This beautiful details, you are right. So, I think it's so beautiful. Okay, so let's go up. We are going backwards. Normally we could go around it, but as I said, they they're under construction, so nope, nope, no, no, today. We have more mosaics. This one's come from uh, Roman baths that we are here in the city of Pamplona. These are the ones that we started with Emilia Ayers. Funeral traditions and Roman times. Just beautiful. Sorry, we are not going to be stopping it. I mean, when we were deciding what are we going to show you guys from here, hi Anne from Minnesota, it's like, how can we not stop here? I mean, look at all of this. This is so extremely beautiful. But we have no time. We don't want, to, I mean, we could be here like three days in this yeah. museum, 
But no time for all that. Okay, Roman capitals. Okay, so. Okay. Oh. Ah. Yes, go what? up. Yes. We're going up. Yes. So it's our time to go one floor up. Okay, I think we have tried it a couple of times, the connection, and the connection in this museum is fairly well. Okay, so we are happy with that. Uh, the second floor is all dedicated to Gothic art, okay? Uh, we're not gonna go into details in it because it is, uh, we have done Pamplona's Cathedral, we've done a lot of Gothic art on this video, so if you want to check on them, you can go to, the, to our website, travelingsteps.es, and there you could find... Perhaps we can stop Yes, here in this room, yes. yes, a little bit. Only, only one second. Only one okay. second, because we love this room. Okay, here we go. Look at this. These are called Gerisayas. What are these? They're all painted in gray color, okay? Uh, what they did back here is they set plaster on the walls of a palace, and they painted this battle of Sajonia. The Battle of Sajonia, which was... 16th century. 16th century, okay. Uh, 1500? 1500, yes. Okay. And it's Charles V, 5th of Spain, okay. Yeah. And here, one of the great things is that we get to see the armory of the 1500s in the kingdom of Spain. The clothes and the, clothing, the yes, uniforms yeah. and yes, everything. And with a lot of details. Yes, I mean, look, even the horrors. Oh, it's really, really, really amazing. It's super intricate and it's not an easy room to, for, to explain. Yes, because it's not easy to, to use the mobile for that. Yeah, it's... <laughs> the camera. So... It, it was one whole room back then in the palace and they brought everything here because unfortunately that palace is very, very, very deteriorated, okay? So, as you see, it's a beautiful painting. It tells all the battle, all the story and the whole thing. Okay, so we can go up. let's go up, let's go up. Can you hear the people working? So, uh, from here, we're going to Baroque time, but we need to take a step back in time. Because uh, here at this museum, we have one incredible little ivory box that dates uh, the Muslim time in Spain, okay? Normally, it is downstairs, but today, because of all of these works uh, in progress in the museum, they have moved it all the way here. So, first, here you have an interpretation of Baroque interpretation of the creation of the world. Here we have the separation of the light to the sh from the shadows. Here we have the land and the oceans. I love this one <laughs> because this is the creation of the animals. It really reminds me of Tuel Bosch, you know. Look, okay, uh, the reflection, la, la. sorry. Okay, <coughs> okay I guess. All of this phantasmagoric. You get but, this nervous. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> but you see, it's all the creations. So we have many, many paintings. But the incredible thing about this museum, it's probably this box, this ivory box. So this ivory box, sorry, it dates from, whoops, let me get the light off. Here we go. Yes, better. Better. So, it dates from the year about 1,000 of our century, of our, yes, no, the end of, the century, of our era, okay? It comes from the south of Spain, okay, where we had the Muslim empire. Remember that in the year 711, the Muslims came in and became, all Spain became, we're talking before Spain was Spain, uh, we, came, we became Muslim. And this ivory box, it's an amazing exception because in the Muslim art, it's very difficult to find human representations, okay? And here, as you can see, 
we have all of these humans. So here we have these three musicians playing, okay? Here on this side, we have the Lord <laughs> being greeted by two servants, bringing him waters and ointments and everything. In this little, okay, this ivory box has a 19, whoops, sorry, 19 different uh, plates, okay? They're, each one of them is uh, half an inch thick, so they're super thin. And on each side, one artist uh, made it. And if you see, this is unperceivable in eyesight, but under the feet, you see there's a writing there? That is the signature of the person, of the artist, who made this. But look at how beautiful everything is. All the details, it's incredible. <laughs> uh, are you alive, <laughs> Ella? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, uh, as an exception, as we were saying, we have all of these human representations, and we have some Arabic words that goes around uh, the box. In there, it says, in the name of Allah, we ask for prosperity, joy, hope for good actions, and a delay in the supreme moment of death to Abdal Malik <laughs> Ibn Al Mansur. Which means that uh, whoever made this box was uh, wishing well to Al Mansur. Al Mansur is, was Al Mansur and was one of the most important militaries uh, of the Muslim Empire, okay? So it's a beautiful box that we think uh, it, it was used as a jewel box or a, as a, perfu or a perfume box, okay? Uh, the thing is that we really don't know how it ended up here in the north of Navarre. And we don't know because we have always been Catholic the thing is that we packed with the Muslims and we had quite good relationship with them. We had one queen called uh, Toda, T-O-D-A, who went all the way down south to Cordoba to talk with the caliph in Cordoba, and they packed against the will of the Pope. So our queens here, they had a lot to say because they did an amazing job as relationships. So the whole box is totally decorated. Box is, yes, I mean, it's incredible, the box. Yeah, I mean, probably this is the best, as Elo is saying, yes. the best item in this museum, okay? Because how well it's uh, preserved, the exception of having human representation, uh, being here, the beginning of this box was a jewel box, but it ended up being a reliquary for yes. bones yes, or yes. saints. Okay. Here was two, two, two female saints. Yes. Munila y Alodia. Alodia, not Elodia, which not is her Elodia. name. But look at that, the hunting on top. This guy, okay, the guy on the right, he has a falcon in his hand. And, and the sinners that we are still having, we are still, have, we are still conserving it because it was lost for many years. Yes. yes? Uh, maybe if you went to the Metropolitan Museum in New York in 1992, yes. maybe you watched it because it, it is so important that you made it to the Metropolitan in New York. I mean, I, this ivory box, I could, every time I come and I sit here for an hour, just taking loose of it. Okay, let, let us show you from the other side. Okay. But it's also so beautiful. I mean, I would say that now with this technology of telephones and all of that, I mean, like this is beautiful, but if you make a huge zoom to it and you get to see all the details, I mean, it's like, how many hours do you need to make one of these images. It's gorgeous, gorgeous. Yeah, my, did you hear our niece as we were setting up? Okay. So let's keep on going a little bit farther. 
Uh, because here we have a painting that I think is kind mm -hmm. of funny. Here we go. I love, <laughs> love this painting. This is Orterita. Uh, as you see, it's a painting of, uh, of a bullfighter. Technically speaking, it's a very beautiful because, okay, look at the guy, his face, the lights and the shadows. This is much more modern. This is 20th century, okay? Yes. But especially 1949. 1949. Thank you, Ella. All the gold and everything from the dress, it's super important. So, Look, <laughs> here you get to see in the chair the cobwebs of the, in the chair. I think it's so beautiful. The thing is that we see a bullfighter, but his, his pose is impressive, but not his face. His face doesn't look very okay. And the truth is that he, this gentleman was not a bullfighter. Uh, the painter uh, was Cesar Muñoz. He was uh, asked to be painting Orteita, which was a bullfighter, okay? The thing is that he started with the sketches of the painting and the bullfighter didn't like it. And the painter said, you know, I'm gonna borrow your suit of lights, your bullfighting. And there's this crazy man in the village of uh, Tudela, in the south of Navarre. And he, I'm gonna paint him because he loves bullfighting. So the face and the pose of the bullfighter. It's not a bullfighter, it's a crazy man. Okay, he was crazy. But it's a beautiful, beautiful painting. And when, one thing I think is great how they display this painting here, you get to see the painting here, yes? Okay, if we go around it, on the back, we have the first part of the painting. This is the real bullfighter the sketches of the bullfighter. And as you see, the pose is much more brave and much more strong. And the face, it's, you know, he's much, he's looking at us directly. He's very strong. The other one, the Orteguita, uh, the one that is really painted, he's not looking at us. It's, his eyes are gone. This one is a very strong, very powerful man. But he didn't like this sketch and he said, oh, get out. And he, well, he went, <laughs> but he kept on the back of the painting this. So I love how they portrayed this painting in here because we get to see both sides of it. Yep. Yep. Okay. I love the story of this. Yeah, you're right, Leslie. So this room, it was empty. Oh, it was all full with uh, more paintings, but now they are getting ready to do uh, how do you say? A coin exhibition, because we have a lot of coins. This was, this painting, we're gonna go really quick with it. Uh, it was, it is, sorry, the last acquisition of the Museum of Navarre. And it is a portrait of the city of Pamplona. Yeah. Long, long time ago. Okay. So it's 17th century. This is Pamplona's Cathedral, okay? These are the walls. This is the building where we were, where were you? Here, the building we were uh, on Friday showing you. This is the building. So, and all of these, obviously, the walls are, but all around here, all of this is now constructed. Right? So I think it's super beautiful. It is important because we have Pamplona's Cathedral before the new facade that we have. Yeah, now, oh, yeah? there we go. Yes, because of that it is so important for us in Navarra, because we can see how the cathedral was before the 18th century. Yeah, because the tower. We had uh, our cathedral fell down the, front, the facade, and this is how it looked back then, before. I think that because of that is so important for yes. us, and because of that they they try to have they them in the museum. Okay, but if there is one painting yes. that stands out, this is the painting. The, exactly, this is the <laughs> painting in the museum. This is a Francisco de Goya painting, okay? This is the Marquis of San Adrian, okay? Uh, San Adrian is a village in the south of Navarre, and he was the Marquis of San Adrian. He married 
the Marquises of the Santiago. Of Santiago. And uh, she was very powerful, very wealthy. And he painted uh, the couple. Okay, here we only have him. We don't have the portrait of her. Uh, she is at the Getty Museum in LA. So if anybody lives near LA, please go to see yeah. the original, the other half of this painting, which is oh, yeah. this okay, one. There we go. Yeah. So this is the Marquis of, uh, of the Santiago. <laughs> and one thing I love about this painting, that you have to go to, new, to LA, to the Getty Museum, to the Getty Foundation, it's that look at her face. Okay. I think over here. There we go. I think that's yes. the best way to see it. Uh, <laughs> she has so much makeup. This is that uh, Goya, the big Spanish painter, did not like her. Okay, so he painted her like this, like very, pff, okay, I have to paint you because you're the wealthy one. But I am a friend of him. Okay? These two are super, super good friends. Nos sentamos en él. Yeah, okay. I think it's... So, yeah. so, if you have a chance to go to the Getty Museum, please go over there. About the Marquis of San Adrián. Uh, as you see, he, his pose is very elegant. He is kneeling on a side. It's, uh, he is wearing his horseback riding suit. But at the same time, if you see, let me not fall, he's reading a book. Okay? He has a little key on his, uh, on his pants. So what Goya is letting us know is that this gentleman, he is a sportsman, but also he is an intellectual. We're in the moment where uh, 1808, the French troops come into Spain, okay, the Napoleonic troops. And all of these illustrated people, all these very cultured people, they were very French style, and he uh, supported Napoleonic troops. Four years later, when uh, Napoleon was kicked out of Spain, obviously all the supporters had to go. And he went, and uh, he lived in Bordeaux, in, uh, in France. Okay. Things that I love about this painting, first, his face, if you see, he is not looking straight at us. Where I put him, no, I hope I don't fall on top of the painting. Okay, he's looking into the horizon, so he's like, okay, I'm reading your Goya, the best painter in the court, is taking a picture, of, you know, is painting me, and I'm looking in the horizon because I am much, so much better than that. I love that attitude. It's like, mm hmm. But in this painting, to me, what really stands out is that the quality of the master of, uh, of Francisco de Goya. Goya, he, he was super good dealing with textures, especially textures of fabric, okay? If you see any of the Goya paintings around the world, uh, especially in the women's portraits, you see the lace and how he does the embroideries and how he paints the pearls, the jewelry, everything is perfect. But here, we have a gentleman and we still see, we can almost feel all the fabrics. So let me take you on a fabric tour. <laughs> Look at the wool, the wool of the coat. Okay, I think it's called frock coat, F-R-O-C-K, with a little tail. And it's very warm, it's very comfortable. Okay, it's made of wool. The vest is shiny because it's leather. I'm oh, sorry, it's silk and the scarf, it's all made of silk. It's very crispy. And the pants, he's horseback riding in velvet pants. I mean, you can almost touch how soft and comfortable these pants are. I mean, it's like incredible. And if we take a look at the leather boots, I mean, it's so extremely beautiful. I mean, when we talk that, when we say that Goya is a master, this is what it is. I mean, he lets you feel the texture in the fabrics. He lets you feel what it is, you know, what he is all about. 
but also we get to see the person. He is a little bit arrogant, he is intellectual, he is a sportsman. So it, he is his friend. He's a friend. I mean, <laughs> he treats him think, as a friend. Uh, and it shows. Yes, because the master was a master a too. Master. When he was painting her. Yeah, but when he was painting her, <laughs> yeah. she was not a friend. But okay. The difference is really obvious. Yeah. I mean, she's very stiff, very. <laughs> and he yeah. is super relaxed. And I love how beautifully relaxed he is. So it's an amazing, amazing work of art. I mean, I don't know if you have had a chance to go especially to the Prado Museum in Madrid where we find most of the Goya amazing paintings. It's overwhelming. Okay? You have to think that uh, when we talk about Francisco de Goya, okay, let me turn this around. Okay. Uh, when we talk about Goya, there's always like two parts, the lights and the shadows. In the lights is when he's painting all of these. It's the happiness. It's the he he's working for the crown of Spain. He's the number one painter, but he's not an easy painter. Okay, he is a big mouth. In as we can we have seen in these two portraits of him and her, he, if you put them together, you see that he is a friend. She is not. When he paints the family of uh, Charles V. Uh, you miss going to museums, let's say me too. <laughs> uh, there's one person, okay, you have the portrait of the whole family, and there's one character doing like this. It's looking to the back. This is not a snap picture, this is not a selfie that you take and somebody turn the head up. Goya painted somebody not looking at the king. So that is a very risky thing. The thing is that there was a moment that uh, Goya, uh, sorry, the king of Spain, he could have been the, uh, he, he had to assign the master painter in Spain. And it, it was, it had to be Goya. But as he was such a big mouth, the king said, it's not gonna be you. And he's, Goya started on a depression, okay? Uh, big depression. Big depression. <laughs> then the thing is that Spain was invited by the French. And a lot of killing went on and on and on and on even deeper depression. And to top of that, uh, Goya had started losing his hearing, he had tinnitus. So there was a lot of sounds in his head. So he was going down, down, down. And that is when he goes from the lights to the shadows, to those Saturn devouring his family, the Aquilares, all the witches, and all of those dark paintings of Goya that are so sublime. So. It's, yes, it's, it gives you goosebumps. If you have a chance to go to Madrid, really go to the museum. I mean, to go to El Prado, because you get to see those lights and those shadows of Goya. This guy, it is from the sh lights. Okay, I, this painting to me, it's really, okay, let's take another look at it. You don't need to see me. <laughs> it's much better to see. I mean, I think it's really, really an amazing work of art. I mean, it's, so beautiful. And once again, if you have a time to go to the Getty Museum in LA, I have never seen the Marquis of uh, Santiago, okay? You could go over there. Okay, yeah. so we're gonna take... Director, yeah, maybe if we see it in yeah. life, it's not as horrible. We need to go to LA. We need to go to LA, yeah. So, and here we go to the 20th century. And uh, probably one of the most important painters that we have in here from Navarre it is Joaquin Ciga. Ciga, he is the painter who paints the rural life of Navarre at the turn of the century. So this beautiful painting, it is uh, the priest in the Bath Town Valley uh, coming to a house where somebody has died and he's coming to pray. And all of these ladies and these gentlemen, they are there uh, praying and everything. What stands out of this painting is uh, the spirituality of it, because if you see the priest, the church, God, is in the light, and death is in the shades. So it is that double standard, that double image of good, God, everything. Okay, so it's a beautiful, beautiful painting. It's a way to see how we live here in Navarra at the start of the 20th century. Yeah. Yeah. So we have many beautiful paintings of the 20th century. 
And we're going to finish with some of these beautiful landscapes from Navarre, all painted by local painters. Look at that. Okay, we're talking more impressionism, much more modern things. I know that one. <laughs> the one with the bright colors? Yes. It's so beautiful. This is the one that I love here. Okay. Let's take it. No. <laughs> yes. Okay, okay, okay. So, I think we're ready. See? See? We are. So, have we been like 40 minutes more or yes, less? 40 like minutes. Yeah. We went just as planned, 40 minutes. So, hopefully, you guys have enjoyed it. Uh, as I said, it's been an amazing honor to have all the museum for ourselves. Thank you so, so much. Uh, you guys know that all of these tours are cheap supported. If you... <laughs> Happy word. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's my birthday on Wednesday, William. You had to say it. I'm turning 50. No! What is that? Today, no? no, no, on Wednesday, on Wednesday. Ah, okay. I'm turning yes, 50. I forgot. <laughs> it's 50 years old, God. Anyway, so, <laughs> uh, I, we hope you really have learned a little bit, uh, you have enjoyed it. Uh, birthday tips. <laughs> Crazy, local, thank you. Uh, so, Everybody, thank you so much. Big kisses. We'll see you next week. We are well, still planning yes. on what we're going to be doing. We will try. So we shall see you soon. Okay. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.